If I can make it just one more day. Sometimes I wonder how much more can I take? But when I look into the Word of God, and I know that His promises are true, and I know everything is going to be all right. Yeah, everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Sometimes I have Trying to figure out What can I do But it's you Lord That gives me peace I find rest When I think about you And I know everything Come on say that It's gonna be all shaking your head, but you put a smile on your face and say, it's going to be all right. Woo! Great God. Amen. Get a smile on your face and say, it's going to be all right. You just don't understand. You, you, you just don't know the God I serve. You just don't know the one that's able to do all things. You just don't know the one that'll pick me up and turn me around and put my feet on side. It'll be all right. May not look like it. You may be looking at me and shaking your head, but it will be all right. Amen. 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 I got, I got to be cool today. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. Lord have mercy. Y'all going to make me preach. I'm going to 
going to have to get me some new assistance. <laughs> Let's get into this word. Luke chapter 15, verse 25, starting at verse 25. A piece of scripture that we are all familiar with. Luke chapter 15, same Luke chapter 15, verse 25. It says, now his older brother was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called to one of the servants, and he asked, what these things mean? And he said to him, your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatty calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and he said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandments at any time, and yet you did not, you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this your son, this son of yours come, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots. You killed the fatty calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It is right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. And I, I thought, I could, I could have called this all kinds of subjects and stuff, but uh, I thought about What's going to keep you out of the party? What's going to keep you out of the party? Most gracious and eternal God, Father, I thank you for this time. But as always, Lord, I can do nothing without you. So I always ask that you be my mouth. Give me the words to say. Let me say everything that you want me to say and not anything that you don't want me to say. Lord, you know I'll never fail to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody say, speak to us, Lord. Yes, you know, this is a, a, a familiar scripture, this, this text, this subject, the whole thing is very, very familiar. And uh, we basically use it, we talk about the prodigal son. We talk about uh, how this young man asks his father for his inheritance and leaves and goes off to a foreign land and he spends all his money and everything with crazy living and all those things. And then he ends up broke, there's a famine in the land and uh, he can't, uh, nobody will feed him. He gets a job working in the, uh, feeding pigs, swines, which was a bad thing for the Jews. And after that, he, uh, he, he realized that he said he was so hungry, he would have fed, he would have ate the slop that the pigs did eat. And he thought about how much was at his father's house, and he, he said, I'll go back and I'll tell him I'll, I'll be his hired servant, and we find him going back home. And that's basically what we talk about, this prodigal. The word prodigal means lost, and we talk about this lost son. But that's not the gist of this parable. That even though we talk about that a lot, and we talk about it, and it's good to preach and all those things, but to really understand what Jesus was talking about you got to grab it off. First of all, you got to go up to the beginning of, of, of chapter 15, the first two verses, and realize why Jesus was even telling this parable. Because mm -hmm. it says that then all the tax collectors and all the sinners drew near him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man received the sinners and eats with them. So the religious folks of that time were complaining because the sinners and, and, and the tax collectors and the folks were all coming around Jesus and they, the religious folks sitting there with all their stuff on talking about this man, this man, he, he's supposed to be this and that. He's receiving sinners. He's eating with them and all these things. And so it brought Jesus, when Jesus heard, it brought him to tell three parables. In the first parable, he tells of, about a man having a hundred seed. And he said, he talks about how he would leave the 99 if one is lost. He will leave the 99 and go get that one. 
And then he ends it up in, in, in verse 7. He said, I, in verse 7, he said, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repeat, repents than over the 99 just persons who need no repentance. So again, he, he's telling them, you know, what he's about, what he's all about. And then he tells another parable of a lost coin, how a woman has uh, 10 silver coins and she loses one. But she hunts diligently for that coin. And then when she finds it, she calls everybody in to rejoice with her because she found that coin. And in verse 10, he says, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repeats. How, how many times have we seen somebody get saved and that person come to the Lord and we say the angels are rejoicing in heaven? That's where they get this from. That there's joy over this one sinner who would repent. And then he tells the story of this prodigal son. And we usually stop there about this lost son coming back to God. But there's another son. Yes. There's a second son yes. that was in the house that never left his father's house. Amen? And, and, and this son is really the main focus of what Jesus was wanting the church and them to hear. It was this son that Jesus was really trying to get this point across. So not only his, this younger brother was lost in a far country, but he also had a brother that was home that was lost. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You see, see, you can be in the church and be lost. I know a whole lot of folks in the church. Name on the church book. Doing all kind of stuff. But they ain't right. Amen. And I used to call it in the church, but lost. I've been there. Amen. Playing the piano, singing, Amen. doing all that stuff. You sing the song. I was there, man. Didn't know Jesus. I sang, it won't be long. We be leaving here. <laughs> count the years as month. Count the months as week. Count the weeks as day. Any day now, we'll be going home. If Jesus had to come back, everybody would have went and I'd have still been singing a holiday. It won't be long. Amen. Why? Because I did not know Jesus Christ I was in the church. I was playing, I was singing, I was what president was, I was vice president of Christian Endeavor. Amen. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> I got on that because I was trying to meet Mamie. <laughs> but in the church, but lost. So here we find this young man, son, the, the first son was lost, but here he was in a far country, but here was another son that was just as lost. Now Jesus doesn't fault the morality or the obedience of the work or the ethics of the elder brother. What he does fault is his attitude. His attitude, amen? In spite of the many wonderful things that he was doing, all the qualities and all his efforts, the elder son was not right in his heart. And when he came and he saw the rejoicing and he saw the party that was going on, and what was going on, and when he heard what was happening, that his younger brother had came back and everything, and what his father had, was doing, he got angry. Verse 27, it said, he got angry. He became angry. And not only was he angry, but he withdrew himself from his brother. He said he was angry and would not go in to the party. Think about it. Amen. Here your brother comes home from a faraway place. But you see him and your father's having a party. He's having a celebration. And you see it and you get mad. Mm. Having him a party. Mm -hmm. And he would not go in to the party. I ask you today, we're getting ready to have a party. God is speaking Amen. and God is doing some things with this ministry. God is touching some stuff and he's turning around and you're getting ready to see some things happen to this ministry. Are you coming to the party? Are you coming to the party? Will you see those that have been invited? <laughs> Will you see those? Who, maybe it might be somebody that cuts you out. <laughs> maybe it might be somebody that stole from you. Maybe it be, might be somebody that, that did you terribly, terribly wrong that you still ain't over it yet. And they'll show up and you know they have to party. Oh, boy, how many? Y'all don't hear me, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Amen. 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 Mm. 
So he was angry. He would not go in. And by refusing to fellowship, listen to this, by refusing to fellowship with his brother, he also excluded himself from the fellowship of the Father. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He wouldn't go in and fellowship with his brother, but he wouldn't go in and fellowship with his father too. He withdrew himself. The father finally came out side to the house where the older brother was and plead with him to, to come inside. And the father, that love and forgiveness father, the same forgiveness and the same love that he showed the first son, he was trying to show it to the second son. Come on to the party. Come on in. But we find out that this elder brother was also guilty of, of self-righteousness. When the father came out to talk to him, this son immediately called the father's attention to all the wonderful things he'd done. In verse 29, he says, and he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years, I've been serving you. I never transgress against your commandments at any time. And yet you ain't give me a go. Have you ever heard that? Amen. Have you ever heard somebody Amen. that wants to stand up and tell you what it's all about and what they did? And they begin to brag on us, well, I did this. And I, I've been on this board for 40 years. And I did this and some. And here somebody comes new and you're doing this and you're doing this. And all of a sudden you're all mad, your lips stuck out and everything else. Amen. I was here before the first brick was laid. I gave more money than anybody up in here. Here they come. That was his attitude, guys. That was his attitude. He wanted to remind him of all the wonderful things he did. And this old obedient, this hardworking, and this obedient son has a corrupt heart. His heart is characterized by anger, envy, self-righteousness, contempt, and pettiness. He had all this in him sitting in the church. He had all this in him at the house. He had all this in him while he was doing these good things and working just as hard. But all this stuff was in him. Amen? Amen. All this stuff. And so what happened? This first son, this prodigal son, was deprived of a warm, a loving welcome he could receive from his older brother. He didn't get that. In fact, he wouldn't even call him his brother. He told the father, he said, this your son, not my brother, this your son, he's come back. And so he deprived his brother. And so we find that this is a tragic ending to a story that was filled with hope, Mercy, love, and forgiveness, and grace. Now, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't finish up telling me if he ever did anything. But it breaks my heart that I still see this today. Amen. Amen. It breaks my heart that, that things like this still go on today in the church. It breaks my heart that I see people that, that won't show that love. Yes. Yeah. And we, we would rather judge and condemn and, and, and not want them and stuff. And so he had that. And, and so it was meant for the Pharisees because they were stuck up. They thought they were better than anybody else. And anybody that wasn't like them, in fact, like they must have forgot what they once were. I see that happen again, too. I see po folks that are doing the same thing that probably you did before you got saved. And we are more judgmental on them. Oh, Lord, y'all looking at me funny. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Speak, Lord. And so we see this. And we see this kind of mentality. And I'm telling you, God said, God said, get your church ready. Amen. Get your church ready. Amen. I'm about to send some stuff up in there. Amen. I'm about to send some stuff to morning star. How are we going to receive them? How are we going to receive them when they, when they come and they, you still smell alcohol on the breath? 
How are you going to receive them when it's somebody that's been married five times and then they're living with somebody that's not even their husband? And, and, and Jesus said, you must go to morning star. Ah! How are you going to receive them when you, when you see them? Because I've got some guys that are showing up that, that, that's been in jail. I've got some guys that are showing up that have did drugs. I've got some guys that are showing up that have did some mess, buddy. And they're they, they, they telling me, Woody, I'll be there as soon as I get out, man. God has saved me, and you're going to see me. They're going to walk through the door, and maybe you might know. What are you going to say? Well, I, I get enough lies told on me already. Why? Because I'm not afraid to get down in the mud with some. Oh, glory! I'm not afraid to get down in the mud with somebody. Preacher, you, 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 you over there? Yeah, yeah. Had folks showed up one day. I shouldn't even tell y'all that. Maybe in here. I, I got invited to a dinner one time. <laughs> and, and I was the only guy that showed up. And then women had the little drinks and stuff and all that stuff. And I showed up. And I, I said, you know, something said, you better go. And I said, no, I ain't. I'm going to let them see Jesus. I'm going to let them see I can have just as good a time and don't need a drink for anybody else. You know, I, and I'm sitting there, man, I'm smiling, and I'm just loving folks. And every day I get, I get a chance, I talk about Jesus. And somebody was there that knew me. <laughs> and somebody comes and said, you know, so and so and so saw you over there and said, I saw Woody. He was sitting there with a bunch of women that were drinking. <laughs> and they told him, say, it's just Woody. Don't worry about it. Because <laughs> you might see me in the mud. It don't mean I'm in the mud walking with him, but I'm trying to tell him about Jesus. Yeah. I'm not ashamed. Yeah. I haven't got too high to forget where I came from. I haven't got too high to forget who I was, but God saved me. God never turned his back on me. And one day I gave the angels a chance to rejoice. Oh, great God is that. What about you? What about you? How will you act? How will you act when a person walks through this door that you know couldn't stand you. And you couldn't stand them. And they come and sit down right beside you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to act? What are you going to do when you know of somebody that wasn't worth a dime but Jesus has saved them. Now they want to be a part of what we're doing. And they on your, your position. They in your team. They in your thing. How are you going to act? Because I know people that have been here that got run off. Amen. I know people that have been here that, that weren't treated very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. How are you going to act? Will you get mad and walk off and leave the party? Because mm. we're getting ready to have a party. Yeah, yeah. God's getting ready to. The doors are wide open. Reach out to this community and feeding and, and helping people and loving on people and doing all the things that we're doing, and they don't show up where you at. Amen. That's exactly. mm. You can't you can't keep touching and, and making a difference and out in the community and doing all the things like that, and all the, and they not show, they gonna come to your church. Uh -huh. They gonna come where you at. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How you gonna act when they get here? Huh? Y'all remember, some of y'all remember the lady showed up in the, the short shorts and whatever she had on? One of them hop the hoppers? <laughs> Walked in the door, bless my Kim have to be back there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Kim. And Kim said, come on in. And the girl said, he going, I ain't dressed right. Kim said, they don't care, come on in. Amen. And she came in. Amen. You know what we found out? That was all she had. Amen. Amen. She didn't have anything else. The people loved on her. 
But at the same time, son, but turn their nose back. I can't believe you walked in here with that on. Amen. This is the house of God. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I want enough messed up folks to come in here. You ain't got no seat. If you that holy, then you, you leave. Let me get some mess up in here. Give me some junk. Give me some drug addicts. Give me some prostitutes. Give me some feet. Give me some jailbirds. Y'all just going back to business. I'm going to love on those. Oh, great God. I love on those that don't need to be up in here. Boy, you want to turn me this? That's who I want. Not after them. Or are you after them? I got to preach this thing and I'm, I'm going to go over to John City and bless them folks out and they ain't getting up. <laughs> in, 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 in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, here's what Jesus said. I like this. He said, as Jesus passed, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collectors. Now, they didn't like the tax collectors. And he said to him, follow me. <laughs> when you told, last time you told somebody that was a sinner, they all messed up to follow you. He said, and he said unto him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. And now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many of the tax collectors and the sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Well, there was some loving going on, wasn't it? And they sit down with him, and it's like the sinners, the tax collectors, and all these things. And, and the Pharisees, the religious people, the church, saw it and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and the sinners? And when Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. In other words, go figure out what it means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Amen. Lord, have mercy. It don't get no plainer than that. Amen. It doesn't get any plainer. This, this, God, this ain't a hotel for the saint. Amen. This is a hospital for sinners. Amen. It's a hospital for sinners. Guys, come on. We got to be ready. We got to change some things in there. We got to get some stuff out of us. Come here, David. I'm just using you because you got a short sleeve shirt on. <laughs> stand, stand. I want everybody to see you. Turn right here. They, 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 turn right here. They, they turn, turn sideways. They, they turn like it's what they can see. Right. <laughs> yeah, right there. There you go. <clears throat> Take your hand out. Now grab this glass. Hold it out. Hold it out there. You so calm, right? You strong. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? Come over here. <laughs> Here we go. Turn around. Turn all the way around. Face the camera. Face the camera. Ah, you're on Kenny Cam. Now, can y'all see? Y'all can't see. Can y'all see? That's all, all right. That's good. Now, hold it with your other hand. Hold that glass. All right. Have I got your attention yet? Don't let don't you preach, I'm gonna preach. <laughs> what just happened? What comes out of this when we get So he still don't preach my sermon. I should have got somebody else. So in other words, I shook you and water came out. Why didn't uh, iced tea or Kool-Aid? Budweiser. <laughs> Why didn't that come out of there when I shook you? Because water wasn't put in. You owe me a hand. Okay. <laughs> Whatever's in there 
it's going to come at me. Amen. When you get shook, ah, y'all don't hear me. Thank you, brother. <laughs> when, you, when, 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 when you get shook, whatever's in there is going to come out. If the fruit of the Spirit is in there and you get shook, peace, love, joy, righteousness, long-suffering, all that's going to come out. But I'm going to tell you something. If you get shook and there's hatred, envy, jealousy, all that, man, it will come out. Oh, you might have it covered up pretty good on the outside and can't nobody see it right now. And they don't know because you got the three-piece suit on in you, got the big Bible on in you, up in church every Sunday, you're singing hallelujah, you're raising your hands to thank you, Jesus. You got your little step going on, but all of a sudden, somebody shakes you, amen? And all of a sudden, something comes out that wasn't there. That's why I come I ain't afraid to pray the prayer from Psalm 43 now. Lord, search me and know my heart. If there's anything that's not right, then get that mess out of me. Lead me in the way of ever righteousness. What's in you this morning? What's in you? I can't see it because you're smiling. But I guarantee you, Pastor Kane calls it true colors. I guarantee you, if you get shook, it'll come out. Some of you have been shook before. And, so, and you know what? I ain't talking to you. I told you, if I got one thing pointing at you, I got three things of thumb pointing back at me. I've been shook, and Jesus didn't come out. Amen. Something else that I didn't even realize maybe it was there. It was in bread. And so I pray, I said, Lord, Lord, I did not tell you the other day, man. I had to, I had to apologize to a man. At first, I didn't want to. Wasn't my fault. Real arrogant. And that was and it shook me. And when it shook me, I didn't act right. It shook me to the point that I said, go on with your bad self. Be bad. I don't care. I'll never say another word to you. And some of y'all know who I'm talking about. And if you, if you just saw who I'm talking about, you know, you say, well, I can't blame you, Pastor. <laughs> and I walked in, and there he was. And I sit there and look. But you know what? It shook me. But the Holy Ghost came out. <laughs> And the Holy Ghost said, get on over there and make it right. Get on over there and take this high road. And you go over there and you apologize. And you tell him you were sorry. And I'm going, Lord, I ain't did nothing. Get on over there. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Go over there. What's inside you? This morning? Is the fruit of the Spirit inside you? Or is there something else inside you that's going to keep you from the party? Because, you know, in the shaking don't have to be bad. Amen. Shaking can be good stuff. Every man's dead now, but who, 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 who shows up with the money now? Uh, who? Uh, yeah, but who's the guy? I don't know. Sloan, Sloan, Sloan. Sloan shows up <laughs> with your $1,000 a day or your million dollars. You tell me that ain't going to shake you. <laughs> if I come to your house, Gary, with a million dollars, man, won't that shake you? <laughs> wonder what's going to come out. Are you going to get arrogant? <laughs> I ain't even know about nothing. <laughs> I got this now. Because you see, see good, good things can shake you up. Amen. And you change, brother. You get that arrogance in you and think you something, and Mr. Big Shot, who do you think you are? <laughs> huh? It don't have to be something bad that shakes you, it can be something good. But whatever's in you will come out. Whatever's in you will come out. Folks are going to come. People are going to rub you the wrong way. Amen. What's going to come out? Amen. What's going to keep you from the party that God's doing? Because I'm telling you, with all my heart, Sister Kane, God's doing some stuff. Yes, yes, yes. You take that many churches to a, a retreat thing and have the time that y'all did with all the folks with all the different beliefs and ism and schism and everything, and you come together as one. 
Don't tell me what God ain't doing. We go down here on the fifth Sunday with six churches together. And then God, when, when folks, folks that ain't saved see that, man, they're going to say, man, I want to be a part of that. Amen. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get you ready. I'm just trying to get you ready for the party. Are you at the house? Been at the house? But stuff is inside of you? It's going to hurt the body of Christ? Or has God changed you? Huh? Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. You, you, you remember the guy that did the pottery thing? I about flew through the roof on that church when he said, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm working it in here, but it's taking shape on the outside. Oh, glory to God. That's what God wants to do. God wants to come. I ain't there yet. I can get shook. And I ain't really sure what's going to come out sometime. That's why I've been asking God to search me and know me and get into the crevice and crack, man. Because this stuff has probably been laying there for a while, man. I had I had 30-some uh, years to get this mess up out of in me. It ain't just coming straight out of me. I don't know. There might be a few cuss words still up in me. You shake me the wrong way, I'll cuss you out. Because I was good at that. I could cuss you to a fly with a light on you. I think God took it away. <laughs> and he been shook hard enough. <laughs> I take it back. I did get shaken one time real, real bad. <laughs> and I did cuss him back. I just got saved. <laughs> They're coming, yeah. They're coming. And they need our love. They need our understanding. They need our care. And there's some of them, there are, other, there are people that we've got to hook up with. You've got to be the friend. You've got, you've got to be the Paul that will say, follow me, even as I follow Jesus Christ. There's a world out there. And they found out that the world ain't the answer. They're finding out the drugs not the answer. They're finding out that, that the alcohol's not the answer. They're finding out that all kind of relationships are not the answer. And they're looking our way. And they're saying, they got something. And I don't like that. People seeing Jesus in here. Travis, pay me something. Play me something, please. I don't know about you. I'm ready to go to the party. I'm ready to go to the party. And I don't care who's there yet. I just want to be there. I'm ready to go to that party. And I want to be the one when they come through that door. I love you. I love you. You're welcome. We'll work on that, brother. Y'all gotta quit preaching my message. You know what? Let me tell you one more story we got. Some hippies. <laughs> Came into a church one day and they had their bell bottoms and flip flops and hair and tattoos and everything. And they came into the church. And this almost happened at the storefront one day. And they came in and they sit down on the floor. And they said, uh-oh. They up there where Deacon Jones sit. I can't wait for Deacon Jones to come in. It's going to be on. Wait till Deacon Jones get here. They'll know better. And they was all looking at him. He's going to explode. 
Deacon Jones don't play. They said Deacon Jones come through the door. He walks up the aisle real slow. And he comes up to where the hippies and everybody's sitting on the floor and stuff. They said, old Deacon Jones got down on his knees and sit down beside of him. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. What you don't do? What's in you? What's in you? Will you turn your nose up? Will you act like you something? Oh, Lord. Morning star. Got you all people won't come here now. It's gay people going over there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Have I got time? I, I don't even need to find a script. You look it up yourself. I've heard people say that. They even got so mad, they said, Willie's doing gay marriages. No, I ain't doing gay marriages. There gay people been in here that you don't even know nothing about. There are gay people been in here to turn their life around too. Amen. 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 I ain't going over. I won't go over at morning star. It's gay <laughs> people. And I said, well, what about Jesus? Oh, that's an abomination to God. I said, so is lying, gossiping, backstabbing. Oh, oh. I said, well, how, how, how are they going to hear about Jesus? Oh, God. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And if God don't destroy America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I said, why did he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Because of the homosexuality. I said, so is that the only reason? Yes. Because it's an abomination to God. And I opened up my Bible. And I said, look what Abraham said. He said, Lord, if we can find 45 righteous people, we you not destroy the people? God said, I won't destroy if I can find 45. Amen. And the Lord, I, I don't mean to be smart, but, but what if it's five less? God said, if there's just 40, I won't destroy it. Well, Lord, let me, let me ask you one more time. Say, if you, you find 30 righteous people, in the city, would, you, would you save the city? God said, if there's 30, I'll save it. He said, Lord, may, maybe if it's 20, God said, I won't destroy it if there's 20. And then he said, Lord, let me, let me ask you one more time. He said, what if there's 10? If there's 10 righteous people, we you save it? And God said, if there's 10, I won't destroy it. God couldn't find 10 righteous people. Maybe America still exists because they're righteous people that I'm looking at. That's ready to tell them about Jesus. There are righteous people that are looking at and say, yeah, you ain't sin, but you can turn this thing around. I know a God. Amen. God said in Ezekiel, he said, I sought for a man to stand in the bush, stand in the gap and build up the hedge around him so I wouldn't destroy him. He said, but I found none. I just want to know if God's got some righteous people in this place today. And God's got some righteous people that will tell people what thus says the Lord. God, God's got some folks that say, where you live it ain't right. You must be born again. you got to be born again. You have to be born again. I'm not telling you to accept the wrong, but who's going to reach out? Have you got so judgmental now that you quit reaching out to anybody? God destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah because he couldn't find nobody righteous in there. To say we got to turn this thing around. What's in you? What's in you? Man, I didn't mean to say all that. What's in you? I don't know about you. I'm still praying, Lord, search me and know my heart. That's the prayer I want you to pray this week. Psalm 139, last verse. Search me 
and know my heart. If there's anything that's there that's not right, then God, lead me in a way of everlasting. Lead, lead me, God. Lead me. Show me what's there. Because when I get shook, I want the right thing to come out. When I get shook, and you will get shook, what's going to come out of you? Search me. It's all for you.